Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to set up the Dragon Link version 3 Slim UHF system for Bluetooth telemetry connection on your Android tablet and as well as on your laptop computer. Okay, so let's get started. For your receiver, I have here this uh, micro RX from fpbpro.com. Uh, this will be your uh, connection for your plane or for, for from your flight controller to your uh, transmitter module. Then I have here also a special JST GH cable which is intended for connecting the UEXP port on your Dragon Link uh, micro receiver to your flight controller such as your PixHawk or PixHawk 2 or other uh, available flight controller out there like your Vector OSD. But uh, here what I have here is a connector for uh, the UX port of the Dragon Link and the PixHawk 2. Which I'm going to show you later how I connect these two. Uh, for the mic receiver, it is important that you set uh, the TX and RX pins or the serial out and serial input pins on this receiver uh, prior to connecting or setting up on the PixHawk for telemetry function. So you can connect uh, the TX and RX pins on this UXP port but you can also opt for uh, to connect those TX and RX pins on any of these PWM pins available on this receiver but in my setup I always use this UXP port so that I won't uh, lose any functionality on these pins okay so this is uh, how you connect it okay also, um, in setting up this micro receiver, you need a micro USB cable. So you can put it here to connect it to your computer. Um, since this is a 25 milliwatt receiver module, you don't need, you don't really need to put the SMA antenna here during setup. But on the transmitter side, you need to plug in your um, SMA antenna before powering it up. So you don't. Uh, risk uh, the TX on getting fried or getting a magical smoke Okay, so I have already plugged in this into my computer So on your laptop computer you need to run this Dragon Link GUI software okay. So once you plug it in you'll notice this new tab the micro RX Okay, and this is how uh, my receiver is um, set up. I have here the PLC for normal channels 1. These are the physical channels on this micro receiver. We have 8 channels here, so we have here 8 channels. I set channel 7 to PPM, but on SBUS or PPM output, you have here 12. So this is for 12 PPM out or SBUS out. Uh, RSSI is set on digital pin 8 ppm pin 8 and of course you have the UEXP connectors uh, set for serial out and serial in so this corresponds to this 3 pin or 2 pin system that I have here on my connector I'm sorry so black is ground yellow is pin 4 this is serial in serial in or RX is connected to PixHawk TX and the blue connector sorry the blue connector is my serial out this is pin 3 serial out or TX on this uh, micro receiver this is TX this is connected to PixHawk RX so take note of that uh, TX connects to RX RX connects to TX okay so once you've set up the UXP serial out or in uh, that should do those things and you have to click on save settings but if you connected your um you uh serial out and serial in to any of these pins pwm pins you can instead set the serial out here or serial in here or whatever channel that you've used for 
the setup, then you change this to not connected or not connected the other. Then click on save settings. Now I have your pins for N5, uh, pins 5 and 6 rather for serial out or TX, serial in for RX. Okay, then you click on save settings. Okay, but since I'm using the UXP port, I just uh, revert this back to channel 5, then channel 6 here. This is serial out and serial in. Okay. So click on save settings. Uh, next, we need to set um, the radio modem on your receiver. Now it's important that you set this baud rate to 19200 because this is the baud rate that is being used by the receiver for the bluetooth function or streaming the telemetry data rather so set the baud click on set baud then don't enable the mavlink decoding yet because if you enable the mavlink decoding uh, you won't have the bidirectional telemetry so but i want what i want here is a full bidirectional telemetry so we don't Enable this mapping decoding. Okay, so if you're done, um, click on save settings at the bottom of this uh, UI. Then, of course, uh, what else? So, I guess that's it. You close the software and you power the cycle on your or cycle the power on your RX. So, by removing this one, okay, so your receiver is done. You have to set up the Dragon Link TX module uh, for the Bluetooth function. Uh, you need to connect the USB cable on this port of the Dragon Link transmitter. Connect it to your laptop. And again, using the same Dragon Link user interface. Now we have here this uh, TX tab. Previously, this is an RX tab. So since we've already connected the TX. So right now we have here uh, the settings for the TX module. So if you go to the general settings tab, you have here the option to reboot the TX, reset TX to factory settings, bind, and as well as load some models that you have saved on this unit. So here we want to try resetting the factory settings to give us a clean slate. Okay, so you will hear the beeps on the Dragon Link transmitter because it lost its bound, it set it's uh, alarms on again so on your radio uh, on your dragon link ui uh, you can now set all these parameters that we have so for alarms i want to disable the low tx voltage alarm, alarm for now maybe check the rssi uh, missing ppm and save settings okay so with that uh, the TX uh, stopped beeping, so meaning it accepted the settings that I have already set for the alarms. Uh, for the RF, RF protocol, you have here the default RF band, normal, bidirectional telemetry. So it's the transmission channels, you have 12 channels, PPM or SBUS, bidirectional bandwidth and RF preference. So for this setup, uh, what we're concerned here is to adjust this bandwidth pref uh, bed for bidirectional telemetry and RF preference. Okay, uh, uh, next, uh, we need to select uh, the proper band bandwidth for the bidirectional telemetry or the preference for the RF. So which one to set? We have here low, medium, high. And for the RF preference, you have even more range, more range, normal, faster update rate, and fastest update rate. Uh, if you're using a Pixac flight controller that has Mavlink for telemetry, then you need to adapt the settings for that kind of setup. So step one, RF preference, you can select for from ultra fast quads, standard mix with very good trade off between range and update rates very long range platform where update rate is less important and airframe using radio modem feature like the Mavlink so since we're using Mavlink so we select this one click on next and do you use 1.2 gigahertz video frequency so select yes next okay so now we have here the bidirectional bandwidth 
set to high, our preference set to fast data, fast test update read. Okay, then click on save settings. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, you want this fast test update read for uh, the Dragon Link map link. So your mission planner will have, as much as possible, uh, less lags between the uh, updating of the data. If you change flight mode, it will immediately update and so on. If you change it to something like normal or even more range, uh, mobbling transfer becomes uh, slower, but you will get more mobbling range. But for this setup, you just want it to be at the fastest update rate okay so after click on save uh, that's it for this RF protocol power all of these settings are set to, to auto but usually I set this low power to 100 milliwatts this is on switch 2 which is the only switch that you have on your TX module Okay, so everything else is on auto save settings save settings is at the bottom toolbar okay uh, for the general settings again uh, you have this access on these options for the external connections uh, you have your bluetooth map link uh, drag link map link uh, expansion connection auto detects rx idle baud rate and gi config um Sorry, if you want to connect it to your computer or your tablet, you have to enable this Bluetooth uh, connection. So change this to radio modem, which is the one needed by the Pixhawk. Uh, expansion connector, uh, change it to either Dragonlink Mablink or Taranis Telemetry. So this uh, TX module has a, an expansion connector underneath. Uh -huh there which you can connect directly to your TX or uh, to your uh, Taranis if you have that kind of radio but for my setup I have a Futaba so expansion connector should be fine with Dragonlink Mavlink. Baud rate uh, this is the speed of connection between your TX module and your laptop or Android so uh, it needs a baud rate of 57600 USB function, again at the bottom of the transmitter module, you have a USB port uh, which you can connect to your laptop for direct connection between mission planner and your transmitter. And the last option here is the Mavlink decoding. So if you enable the Mavlink decoding, you will have a bit longer range for your Mavlink connection but you lose the bidirectional uh, telemetry function. So we don't want that. We want a full telemetry bidirectional flow of data. So you can upload and check the status of the plane and of your big sock flight controller and so on. So with these settings, uh, this will be fine for big sock for bidirectional telemetry. So click on save, save settings below. And yes, that's it. So every time you change, uh, any of these parameters on the Dragonlink TX, you always need to redo the binding process. So you have the option to click on binding here or do it uh, externally. So since we also need to cycle the power between the on the transmitter module, so let's disconnect it from the laptop and cycle the power on. Okay, so hold down this button. Uh, for binding, we need the second set of beeps. Okay, first beep, second beep. So this is blue on the firmware, blue LED on the firmware. So it's always the second beep. Okay, okay for your receiver to, to bind it, you need to, of course, uh, power the receiver unit. And using this lipo okay, so let me put it down first okay so that's the pixel beeping sound uh, how to know that the RX and the TX are bound you'll see the blinking blue LED on the receiver okay so time to cycle the power turn it off and remove the lipo 
reconnect it, power, power your EG module. So now we have a solid blue LED on the receiver, so it's already bound. Okay. Uh, you may also notice that my receiver is already connected to my PixHawk RC in. So this is a PPM1 wire cable, and also uh, the UXP connector, which is for the serial in and serial out of the Dragon Link. Uh, receiver module is now connected to my PixHawk through telemetry port 1 okay, so you have the option to use telemetry port 2 or even GPS port 2 for connecting the Dragon Link Mavlink but for my case I use telemetry port 1 since I am reserving the, the other ports serial ports for my other devices okay Okay, so now it's connected, go to the config tab and under the full parameter list, uh, the requirements of the Dragon Link for setting up the Bluetooth connection requires you to change board ser serial 1 reset and chip select pin. So right here we have BRD. Oops. Search for it, BRD, Serial 1, RTS CTS, and Serial 2, RTS CTS. So, since you've connected um, the Dragon Link to your to, term, to telemetry port 1, we need to change this value. So, by default, this has a value of 2. Uh, we need to disable this uh, item. So, type in 0, write parameters. Okay. So, next. Since you've changed uh, the settings for the serial port 1, you also need to change the protocol. Uh, by default, this parameter for the serial board is on 57600. So this is 57. We need to change it for, 50, for 19200, which is the baud rate of the Mavlink on the receiver. Okay, uh, serial protocol is, it should be 1. So again, write parameters. So we have 19 and 1. Okay, so next, search for the stream rate parameters for the serial port 1. So you type here uh, SR1 on the search box. Okay, so these are your SR1 parameters. Um, what we're going to type in here are the values posted on the Dragon Lake website. Apparently, the site is down, but we already acquired the required values some sometime before so you just have to type it in okay so i've already changed the values for the sr1 parameters uh, click on uh, write values write parameters now we have here the new values uh x stat one extra one is five extra two is five extra two is one params is eight position two row control is one Plus sensor is 1 and RC channel is 0. Okay, so this is your stream rate values. Okay, so don't forget to click on write. Then hit on refresh. So now we're loading again the parameters. Okay, lastly, um, this is for the mission planner connection for Bluetooth and Mavlink transmission so you have to open in the in your mission planner this setting under the config tab the planner then set the attitude to 5 position should be on 2 mode status should be 1 rc is 0 and sensor is 1 so okay so refresh it 52101 so that's it okay so now we're ready to test it for Android tab and Mission Planner Bluetooth connection. So let's disconnect it and remove it from the USB port. Okay, so before anything else, uh, maybe you can try cycling the power on both the TX and the RX units. Uh, so let's give it a try. Next, we need to establish a uh, pairing between the Bluetooth uh, modules of 
the t tablet and your Dragon Link transmitter. So with that, we have to enable the Bluetooth feature on your tab. Searching for available devices. Okay, serial port device. This is your Dragon Link uh, TX module. So setting up for pairing. Okay, by default, uh, the passcode here is zero 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 zero. Four zeros. Click on OK. Okay, so now the devices are paired. Okay, uh, for the ground station on your Android tablet, you need to download uh, this software called Tower. Uh, previously, this was termed as Droid Planner, but now this is Tower. You can download it from uh, Google Play. Okay, so here's your interface. Um, now we're going to connect the tower application to our Dragon Ring transmitter. So just make sure you have here selected uh, the Bluetooth component, then click on connect. It will pop up your devices that is already paired in your in your tablet. So you have your serial port device, and it's already connected. You have your the voltage, uh, the flight mode. Okay. The satellite counts so and our HUD are the heads of display on this uh, portion. So if I move the plane, you will see that it's all it's also rocking. Okay, there's a bit of delay for the mabling, but it's fine. Okay, so how to verify if we are really connected? Uh, if I change the flight mode on my radio, it should update this tower application okay so now it's on a stabilized mode change it to return to launch mode return to launch okay so there's a lag between the connection but it's okay so we can also uh, arm the plane if you want to but since it has some pre-arms uh, requirement so we cannot arm it directly uh, but at least uh, we got it working on my GPS 3D log. on my android tablet Okay, so again mode, change to manual. Mode manual. Okay, so this is fine. Now we can um, add our mission flights if needed. So we can access it here or change the, the full parameters if you want to. I'm sorry. Uh, parameters. So we can load the entire uh, pick up our plane parameters on your tablet and change it if you are going to tune it or any other applications that you want to. okay so it's working on my Android tab uh, after this I uh, will try setting it up on mission planner so let's try connecting it later on okay so let's just wait for it to finish okay Okay, so now we have here the entire parameter listing. So uh, I'll try disabling this army check first. Army check, none, upload. Okay, so we have a green light on my Pixhawk 2, meaning we are good to go, good to fly. So we can arm it uh, by a transmitter if we want to. Or let's say uh, arm it via the tablet, vehicle data. Okay, so try arming it. Arm. Okay, so, so now it's armed. If I try it up. Okay. Or we can also disarm it using the tablet. Uh, let's see, disarm. Disarmed. So, okay, so that's it. Okay, uh, for this part, we'll establish the uh, Bluetooth connection between your laptop and our Dragon Link transmitter. So I've cycled the power again. Then on my laptop, I have enabled the Bluetooth connection, uh, Bluetooth uh, module. So here we have the option to add a device. Okay, so now it's searching for available devi devices. Okay, uh, other, so this is serial port device. This is your Dragon Link, so pair it. 
Again, you will, you will be using the device sparing code, which is um, 0, 0, 0, 0 for the Dragon Link TX module. Okay. Now the the computer is now installing your Bluetooth uh, device found. Okay. So we can skip obtaining drivers from the web. So to hasten up the installation. Okay. Now we have your uh, com link. Let's say Bluetooth, Bluetooth device have your com link uh, 57 and 58. So which one? We're going to try both. Okay, so close. Okay. So we have two uh, COM ports for the Bluetooth 5758. So let's try both. Uh, so COM 57 first. Set to 57600 baud rate. Then click on connect. Okay. So hit, here it says connect field. So maybe uh, it's not COM 57. Let's try COM 58. Again, the same baud rate of 57600 here. Click on connect. And hopefully, it will establish its connection. Okay. You see, uh, now the mission planner is obtaining the uh, parameters from PixHawk. So, meaning we have established a wireless connection between my Dragon Link transmitter and of course our laptop. So this is through Bluetooth. All right. If you go to the flight data page, uh, here you'll see the HUD or the heads up display updating whenever I try uh, moving the plane or rocking it side to side. Also, we can try it to arm the plane uh, since it's already uh, emitting a green LED, a green light on the LED. So we can try arming it. So it's armed. So if I throttle it up, it will start. We can also disarm it if needed. Okay. So again, this is on full Mavlink uh, bidirectional telemetry, not Mavlink decoding. So meaning we have. Uh, full bidirectional transmission between the plane and also the ground control station. We can upload missions while it's in flight. We can download or access the sensor, uh, the information on the IMU on your plane and display it on your mission planner through uh, the UHF system of this Dragon Link version 3. Okay. So I think uh, this ends my video demonstration on how to set up this uh, Dragonic version 3 for Bluetooth connection within the Mission Planner as well as on my Android tab. I'm not sure but my hunch is that you cannot uh, connect the Mission Planner as well as your tower uh, software to your transmitter at the same time because uh, it needs to be paired so meaning you have a one-to-one -one connection between the transmitter and your laptop or your transmitter and your tablet okay so i guess that's it thank you for watching